Ready to get them? Yeah. Yes. Put my lunch away. Oh, ho, ho. Yes. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Florida. Ken, there's a lot of pressure taken off you the morning yes. after catching a teener. Yes, except I didn't get any sleep last night. <laughs> It's now the following morning, yesterday evening. I didn't catch it. I got to witness it though. This man caught what we're av what we're guessing is like pretty much right at 13 pounds. It was just under 27 inches and a little bit over 22 inches in girth. It is February 28th. Ken, it's the full moon today. Yes. It's the full moon today, and we are on a lake here in Central Florida with a lot of giant bass. Are we going to catch one today? I don't know. Today we have no live bait in the boat, all artificial, but we do have the good luck charm. Some beautiful orange juice from the orange shop. This orange juice is $9 for a half gallon, and I promise you every fluid ounce is worth it. A little foggy this morning. What do we got for water? 68 so far, but it takes a little bit. So you're starting off with jerk bait? Yeah. Ken's gonna start off with the jerk bait. Look at him on live scope, like all the cool kids are doing. Oh, look at that one, dude. Yeah. There's just a fish moving down there. Yeah. While we still have low light conditions, I'm gonna throw this big white walking bait. See if I can get one of these fish to come up to the surface. There's really nothing better than Sunday morning topwater bites, is there, Ken? No. No, there is not. Especially when they explode. I'm hoping I catch one quick so you'll put that jerk bait down yeah. and tie one of these on. But we're fishing a pretty unique lake as you guys can see in that it has a bunch of standing timber. Pretty rare for Florida. We are on Rodman Reservoir if I haven't said it yet because it's pretty obvious and this lake gets fished very hard but there are huge fish in here. But when the water's less than 70 it don't matter. You got one? Oh that's a nice one. Jerk bait. Whoa, look at how he ate it, dude. Hold on, oh, hold on. <laughs> Think he wanted that jerk bait? <laughs> dude, he's got the bill down his throat. It's not a bad fish either. Yeah. Nice, first fish. The way he ate that jerk bait makes me think that I should really be putting this down. There's fish everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, so those are, that's a fish, that's a fish. We're in the deep oh creek channel. And it comes, dude, look at all of them down there. Look you should that. talon. Can, oh, we're too deep to talon. But I know we're on that edge. That's why that live scope technology is so unbelievably helpful. Like, you can see everything in front of you. Dude, there's a lot of fish relating to that break. It's 10 to 15 feet in front of us. And look at all the stumps on it, oh, down trees. See, we're right here and it's circling around. Yeah, gotcha. So these fish, like most of them are still pre-spawn. So what they'll do is they'll sit in this creek channel, particularly on the edges, until they're ready to push up on these big woody flats to spawn. Because all of this wood and flat, even though the shore's like, I don't know, that's probably like three quarters of a mile away. Even though that's far away, this whole flat is like four to five feet. This water's clear enough where they'll spawn all over this big flat. So, so many of these fish are sitting in these creek channels staging, feeding up. A lot of them are looking up for baits like that, jerk bait, looking up to eat bait fish. But I have been told that you can get a lot of really big fish just fishing super slow on these ledges with like a creature bait, any soft plastic, as long as it's June bug. There's one. Yep, yep. Nice. <laughs> he just missed it. Finally got a top water bite. Been trying hard enough. Did I just put that big worm down? Was it? No, I casted that stump with the worm. Oh, that channel's close. 
Rodman Reservoir Giant on the top water. Dude, I thought that was so much bigger when he ate it. <laughs> he hit it so damn hard. That was textbook, right when that got next to the stump. I've located fish on a bed. It's probably like a four or five pounder. It's bedding right up on shore where he's supposed to be. I threw in a Texas rig, a cast or two, and he did not want anything to do with that. So, I'm gonna tie in this little bluegill swim bait and see if that's gonna make him fired up. As you guys know, one of the main duties of a bass on a nest is to protect the eggs. And the number one thing that they're trying to protect those eggs from is a bluegill. So this brand new little swim bait from 10,000 fish called the Headhunter will be perfect for this, looking like a nesterator. Not only does it look super duper realistic, but all the weight is up in the nose, so it rests nose down. So when you're hopping it real slow, it looks like that, and like it's eating the eggs, or trying to eat the eggs. So, you guys can't see the bed, unfortunately. I can barely see it, but it's right on the other side of that. We'll see how aggressive he is if this bluegill fires him up. God, he smoked it. <laughs> I'm gonna get this fish. I'm gonna get him. I'm just keeping it in place and dancing it like ever so lightly. Got him. No! Oh, oh. <laughs> Damn, he's not gonna eat again. I threw him to the moon. I should have waited a second or two before setting that hook. Damn it. That's okay. We'll chalk that one up to a user error. That's not the first time. And it sure as hell won't be the last either. Where? Is it straight ahead? It's not around this corner. I think it's straight ahead. Yeah, because that's the big bed that was just past it that was not, that was empty. Yep, it's right there. I see it. All right, round two. He's right there looking at it already. Got him. Oh my god, it's huge, dude. It's a female. Tailing up, tailing up. Oh my god, Ken, get the net. Get the net, it's huge. Ken, 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 I gotta keep pressure on it. I gotta keep pressure on it. I gotta keep pressure on it. Okay. This is. Who is that net? <laughs> Headhunter in the mouth, baby! It's not as big as I thought it was, but that's it's a big nice. one. <laughs> it's fun to do it. It's fun to be on a bed. Oh, it's pissing all over. Is that the male? Dude, I think that's no, just that's the... A... I think that's just the big male. That is the male. <laughs> the female's huge. The female's Look bigger than that. this. See, that's the male. I wonder if we should put it in the live one. I missed this know? fish about 15 minutes ago on the headhunter. Came back. This fish could not stand that little bluegill imitation in his bed. I threw Texas rigs in there. He didn't want anything to do with it. Every single time I threw this bluegill in there, he hit it. Like I said, guys, it's perfect because it rests nose down. So it looks like a feeding bluegill attacking the nest. They can't stand it. Ken and I were not expecting to bed fish today, but when we were going down the bank, I couldn't pass up this fish. The scary thing is that this is a male, but it's a huge male. It's probably close to... Four and a half, five pounds. 
I can't stress enough you guys, if you're trying to bed fish this upcoming spring, please try a bluegill imitation bait like this 10,000 fish head hunter. We'll get him right back on his bed. be off to make babies. Dude, when I set the hook on that thing, I thought it was the female. I'm not used to males being that big. Really? Yep. Uh-huh. Out in the middle. Jason. Jerkin. It's just about, uh, that's timely for a midday update, Ken. What's your midday update? What are you thinking? Thoughts? It's now 12.45. <laughs> I think that nice fish I caught off a of bed is leading us on a little bit of a wild goose hunt because I've been going down the bank pretty fast. I've seen at least a hundred tilapia beds and that's like, I don't know, that's a decent fish but that was not on a bed and I have not seen a single other bass on a bed and we've probably searched, I don't know, at least three quarter of a mile of shoreline looking for beds and we cannot find another bass in a bed. Immediately when we started looking this morning, well, just looking on shoreline, we weren't even really looking for beds per se, but the second we came up to the bank this morning, we saw that fish, and Ken, it might've led us astray a little bit. If we're gonna see spawners, we're gonna see them pretty soon here, but we're probably gonna abandon this and go back to the jerkbait punching in a little bit here because I am not seeing many spawners and some good shorelines where there should be. About that time. We, uh, Ken and I have punched. God, I think we've gone like a mile down these grass islands right now. We have been punching these hyacinth and gator grass mats for quite a while now and we haven't had a single bite. In between the islands too, there's like nice shallow bars where we saw a lot of beds with nothing on them. I just don't think there's much going on in this area of the lake, either that or we're not doing the right thing. Either way, I think for the last couple hours of the day, we are going to go back to our little honey hole and drop some more shiners on some 13 pounders. That's all she wrote. Thank you, Rodman. <laughs>